my friends. Any of you know that uh, I'm a fan of Martin Armstrong. Martin Armstrong is an economist. He lives down in Florida and he's uh, one of the most successful prognosticators of financial and economic things in the world. At one time, uh, he owned and ran the largest financial advisory firm in the world. And uh, he has that success and that reputation because he's got a piece of software that he calls Socrates that is uh, never been wrong in its predictions in 40 years. Socrates is interesting because Socrates is based upon cyclical signatures, the cyclical behavior of uh, of this reality. Marty's uh, story is that uh, early on when he was early into the Wall Street and looking at historical cycles of currencies and such, he saw regular kind of patterns within the emergence and demise of different kinds, of, not only currencies, but then he correlated them to different civilizations. And, and he realized that there was this kind of regularity about different aspects of life. And in time, he expanded that to now he's got almost 75, I think, different modules all of which each of which describes the kind of oscillatory uh, behavior of the climate or politics or economics and finance of course and any any of a whole bunch of other kind of things and again, the thing that's really quite intriguing and uh, compelling about this and why somebody like me in the futures business tracks him rather closely and uh, listens to what he says is because uh, his software is, has an extraordinary track record in being accurate all the time. Marty's predictions going into the future are really quite galvanizing, not the least, you know, he talks about an upcoming World War III. He talked about that last year and said we'd be in it now, and that certainly is accurate. He talks about there being a global civil war between 2025 and 2027, that after that, the United States decomposes as a country. And, uh, and then in a five-year period, there's a reorganization, and you get about five new countries in North America by 2032. I mean, wild and kind of crazy kind of things that uh, presume an immense amount of change and kind of direction and organization. It's uh, very, very hard to kind of visualize and picture how you get from the end of the most complex and largest country in the world to five smaller countries in just five years. But anyway, um, his accuracy of his program has been uh, always very interesting to me because in the futures business, you're constantly trying to anticipate what, you know, might come downstream. And if you find a practitioner, if you've got to find a piece of technology that is highly, highly accurate about being able to do this, then it's a, it's a marvelous and wonderful anomaly because everybody else is essentially guessing about all these kinds of things. 
So it's uh, really interesting to kind of think about his machine and his technology and how it works. And I've thought about that and wondered um, going into our future that seems to be emerging here, just how accurate his predictions might be, his machine's predictions, they're not his, his computer predictions. And uh, and it occurred to me that all of this, this is much like chat GBT and some of the AI kind of things, because they are completely dependent upon the database upon which they were, they are extracted or they're developed or they operate. And they're no better than the databases and they don't have any information other than that which is in the databases. And so they are very much biased toward the sources uh, and the people, therefore, who populate the database and the ideas and the values and so on of those who generate the database. And uh, so in a sense, Marty's computer program is the same way. Marty's computer program is based upon the past and it's based upon the cyclical kind of characteristics of 75 different aspects of reality as we live. And if you think about it, these patterns, these cycles are all in the past and you only get this kind of pattern and these representations by looking in the past. And so if something has never happened in the past, then how could it show up in his computer model in the future? It seems in kind of basically, kind of logically impossible that that might happen. And so I asked him last time, I saw him down in, Los, in uh, Orlando at his conference. I said, so Marty, what happens if we humanity connects with uh, extraterrestrial life. I mean, none of that has ever happened before in any kind of explicit way, so it wouldn't be in the database and uh, or in the historical kind of structure that you extract the patterns for your program. So what? how would that do that? And it was at a cocktail party and, you know, everybody's kind of walking around the drink in their hand and he said oh i don't know but it does it you know it just always does it and so i think it'll do it and um it was really quite clear in that context that i wasn't going to get a considered and thoughtful answer from him about it but it still kind of hangs in the back of my mind because i mean the logic the logic train is really quite clear that if it's never happened in the past then it is not a contributing factor to the analysis that the machine does about what might happen in the future. Uh, you get interesting things and anomalies in the future are uh, based upon different kind of combinations and permutations of all of these patterns that you know about. And so when they all merge or they all are coincidental or so on and you get really unusual things that happen but it's all based upon what's happened in the past and so it's hard for me to understand how that um, with these kinds of technologies and these kinds of, that's kind of logic how you anticipate uh, things that are really quite novel and very, and, and by the way, at the same time, very profound. 
And so um, I was reminded, I mean, it was kind of reinforced the other day because Marty Martin Armstrong does this uh, blog and it's free. And so anybody can subscribe to it. And he was railing about, I don't know, probably governments and the war in Ukraine or something like that. And he ended the blog by saying, it's going to be the same way as it's always been because human nature never changes. And I thought that was really quite interesting. Because here we are on the verge of an extraordinary, what it for all, you know, intents and purposes, if you are at all interested in this stuff and you look around, you're greatly impressed by the magnitude and the unusual, unique character of what seems to be inbound. And then you listen to Cliff High and, and Armstrong and others who talk about, you know, what's coming this way. And it's just bigger than anything you've ever seen before. And you uh, say, wait a second, are humans only going to behave in the same way no matter what else happens? The, the point, the issue, the question is particularly uh, germane relative to the fact that we, this is not just about monitoring the three dimensional kind of aspects of this reality. There is other non quantifiable things that are in play right now. And most importantly, is this kind of rising to the occasion, this uh, evolutionary jump of the species of increase in consciousness, call it what you'd like, this rapidly expanding awareness of who we are and what the reality is all like, uh, you know, the larger reality is about. And a companion idea associated with all of that, which we've talked about before, is this notion that we are on the verge, of, as we make our way through all this extraordinary change, we're on the verge of the beginning of a thousand years of peace, or 2,000 or 14,000, depending upon what your uh, source might be. But wait a second, now you've got a discontinuity because on one hand, uh, you've got not only Martin Armstrong, but all kinds of people who are all saying human nature is what human nature is and people are always going to do what they're going to do and all that business. But now you're looking kind of over this chasm into a new space or people don't do the same thing that they've done in the past. They don't use wars to solve problems. Maybe in that space, you're uh, starting to become, you know, reasonable neighbors in a larger kind of cosmic community. And you start to see everything in a really different way. I mean, you can't go a thousand years of peace with the same mindset that we've all walked into the room with. I mean, or at least, I mean that kind of generically. I mean, all you got to do is look around at all the crazy, stupid things that are going on in these wars in Ukraine and in Gaza and so on. And there's an extraordinarily negative kind of mindset about all of this and hate and so on that just cannot, cannot be, be 
present in an environment where everybody gets along and everybody likes each other and you don't have any wars. And so it was uh, a fascinating kind of notion to me that for essentially the first time since his, in history, I guess, in terms of history that we understand it, there's a possibility of a dramatic full ship that just fundamentally changes the nature of who huma humans are. I mean, I've, I'm a futurist, I will tell you in a hurry, and I'm not a historian, but I have dabbled around a little bit in different aspects of the future of the past done some reading about Mongolia and Genghis Khan, quite a bit about the Royal Navy when the England ruled the world back in the 1700s and early 1800s. And God, that was mean, barbaric stuff going on back then. I mean, there were just a lot of people killing a whole lot of people. And if you work your way backward, even into the biblical kind of narratives in the Old Testament, it's just barbaric. I mean, go in there and kill all the people and all the women and all the children and all the stuff. You, you know, and I was trying to be a good father and decided that We'd read through the Bible through one year at the dinner table. So my son, our son, would be exposed to some of these ideas, these uplifting, I write, up, uplifting ideas, the principles about life. It was kind of amazing to read these, how gory the whole Old Testament was because. I'd never kind of fully kind of systematic read my, systematically read my way through the whole thing before. And so you look at all of that and you say, look where we've come and you just, these people just want to do wars all the time and wait. And then you're on this edge of this into a space where everything has changed. And what? has to be at the core of that is that human nature has changed. Human nature as we understand it has changed. So this is a really big deal. This is really, um, you know, it doesn't work in terms that we understand that we commonly understand it. If we use the kind of assumptions, the patterns and things that we all know, like Marty Armstrong's doing, saying, well, human nature will never change. He's looking backward. He's not looking forward. And he certainly doesn't have the input that we all have about how this all works and uh, so on and, uh, and, 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 and where it's going. And so this is, um, again, um, uh, emblematic of the immense and extraordinary kind of character of the space where we're going. And it brings you back, it kind of has a rope and it pulls you back and says, wait a second, you can't, you can't make those kinds of assumptions in going forward into this space. You can't make kind of any assumptions about how this all works. If you presume that you are on your way to a thousand years of peace and that it's going to happen, say, in the next five years, then something amazing and very large and probably pretty scary has to happen between now and then that just kind of resets everyone. What is it? Is it waves of energy out of the galaxy that uh, enable and influence and 
our DNA and suddenly we become different? I mean, I'm reading some books, Barbara Marceniak, and they're talking about things like that, that we natively have 12 strands of DNA and that it was engineered early on that we, they, they would shut off 10 of the strands of DNA because they wanted to be able to control us so that we would not run off and do things that the controllers didn't want us to do back then, many, many, many thousands of years ago. And that now that maybe this these waves of energy out of the center of the galaxy are going to enable this expanded you know, kind of cap of set of capabilities that would make us really kind of godlike in the kind of the ways that we often think of ourselves here in this three-dimensional world. And so there is, um, I, I, I think of this as, as a kind of a, a very useful example, this notion that everything is going to be the same as it's been in the past. Human nature is always going to be the same. If you really look into this, what you find out that, that we, I mean, you, it's hard not to come to the conclusion that something really big is going to happen. And human nature is not going to be the way that it's been in the past, which is going to be the basis for the emergence of this new world, because we see itself things differently. We manifest the imagery that desires we have, the images that we have, the visions that we have for a new world are all quite different than they've been in the past. It's a big, interesting, powerful idea. And so I, it's just one of any number of other kind of things. I mean, there's other kind of capabilities that we're going to have, and you know, we can talk about that some other kind of time. But I wanted just to kind of make the point that there are obvious if you think about it there are kind of obvious indicators about the magnitude of the changes this is inbound and that it is going to um reconfigure the essence of who we are or at least how we in see ourselves and we see this world and so it's uh, really quite an interesting and exciting time for that reason. And uh, I, for one, am very much looking forward to it. So thank you.